I'm preaching today. I'll preach next Sunday. But there's a lot of rocks in church. But if these rocks, if these hold their peace, or if you hold your peace, because see, I'm talking about human beings being rocks. He said those rocks will immediately cry. Don't let nobody steal your joy. We want to ask the Lord to shower his blessings up on Reverend Boyer, and he's going to come in his own way. And we just thank him for his service to the Lord. And let us get behind him and push him. Amen. 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 So, Maestro, whatever you want to play is all right. But after that song that you're going to play, Reverend Boyer is going to come in his own way. God bless you and forever keep you. Thou will draw thy Attention to First Samuel. Um, that's like the ninth book of the Old Testament. First Samuel, the eleventh chapter. Amen. I'm going to read a few verses thereafter. Now, I'm reading from the King James Version. First Samuel. First Samuel. Uh, 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 chapter 11. First Samuel. First, so yeah, starting the first verse. First Samuel, chapter 11. Verse, starting verse 1. Amen? Amen. We got it? We're going to take our time. We're in a hurry to get to it. Amen. You got it, Mother? Hold on. I got it. You got it? Everybody got it? Okay. Amen. The reason for your hearing, then they had. The Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabez Gilead, and all the men of Jabez said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. And Nahash, the Ammonite, answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes, and lay it up for a reproach upon all Israel. And the elders, of, verse 3 said, The elders of Jabez said unto him, Give us seven days respite, that we may send messengers to the coast of Israel. And then if there be no one, no man to save us, we will come out to thee. And then the messenger came to uh, Gibeah of Saul and told the tidings in the ears of all the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field. And Saul said, What end of the people that they weep? And that they told, and they told him the titles of all the men of Jabez Gilead. Verse six. And the spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those titles, and was angry, and his anger was kindled greatly. Read that again. Verse six. And the spirit of, of God came upon Saul when he heard those titles, and his anger was kindled greatly. 
Amen. Amen. Be seated. Amen. And from that sixth verse, we're going to take that subject. It's time to get angry. Uh, amen. It's time to get angry. It's, the verse six says, and the Spirit of God came upon. So, when he heard those tidings, and the Spirit of the Lord, and when he heard, he, when he heard those tidings, his anger was kindled great. <coughs> you know, when you hear most of the time, you hear when the Holy Spirit come on you, you hear about uh, I'm shouting, people shout, Holy Ghost may be shout, Holy Ghost may be happy, you know, Holy Ghost is just fill me up and I'm just, so every time you hear it, say, but Holy Ghost, you always hear something good about it. That's right. But have you, have your Holy Ghost ever told you that it's time to get angry? Come on, oh, on y'all, think about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we all, we always think about that. When the Holy Ghost come, think about sovereign, happy time, people running around, and all that good stuff going on. Right. But here, Saul, as he heard the tidings of the people, and Jabez Gilead, the scripture said, and the, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Mm -hmm. and, we, and when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, the Saul got exceedingly angry. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk this morning on this time to get angry. Amen? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So when we look at the first verse, we look at the story of Jabez, uh, the Nahaz of Ebonite, come up in the camp against Jabez Gilead, and all the men of Jabez said to Nahaz, Make a cup with us, and we will serve you. Every time. Oh, yeah, every time. Now, the circumstance with this, we look at verse chapter 10, verse, the last verse in chapter 10, and it says, But the children of Be Be Beelia said, How shall this man save us? And how? And they despised him and brought him no present, but he held his peace. What is, what's happening in chapter 10 is Saul just got anointed king in chapter 10. Okay. Uh, as, he got, as he was anointed by Samuel, Samuel anointed him. Uh, and he brought him to the people. And some of the people said, yeah, great. <coughs> Thank God for great king. You know, the, uh, but the last group, the Beelia said, said they, they, wanted, they didn't want Saul. They don't like Saul. Mm -hmm. You know, they despised Saul, and they showed him the action by that, not bringing him gifts. They, they refused to bring the king a gift. All right. All right, so that set the stage then. And then when Nahash, and then in the 11th chapter, it began when Nahash talks about, when Nahash is the guy, he's the king of the Amorites. That's right. Right, he's the king of the Amorites. And Nahash had a camp against the Jabez Gilead. And this situation, you understand the situation. When you look at verse chapter 9, chapter 10, you can understand clearly what's going on with Nahab. What happened with Nahab, Nahab before in chapter 8, I believe he talks about where he had uh, had issue with Israel before. Uh, King, Emma, King uh, Nahab, he had, uh, once upon a time, he, we, you know, he talked about he plucked out, the, plucked out your right eye. What he did, what he doing was he had done that before. Mm -hmm. When I first read this, I didn't understand what was going on. Why, why would he say pluck out there right out? Mm -hmm. But then when I looked at chapter 8, chapter 9, and chapter 10, it makes it very clear. They had, had an issue with Israel for a long time. That's right. That's right. Because if you look at if you look at if you look at look at look at the history of this, they has had um, did to the city of the city of Gad and Benjamin, I believe. That when he had cast out, and uh, he had did that same thing to uh, uh, Gad, to the type of Gad and Benjamin. That's right. That's right. He plucked out, and so 7,000 people had escaped from um, the city they were from, and they found themselves in J.B.S. Gilead. Mm -hmm. So at first when I read this, I was wondering why, why did they have, was coming hard on, why was he doing all this, why was he in Captain? And Captain, uh, the man of James Gilly, why would he just do that? Because all of a sudden he just pop up out of nowhere. Yeah, that's right. You know, and he says this. But when you look at the commentary, when you look at the history, they had, they had an issue with uh, Israel for a long time. Mm -hmm. So when, when you look at the history of it, you understand why they had Aaron that came against 
and a camp. He was probably was looking for the seven thousand people that escaped from the first from the first situation he was in. So, but when they, when they looked out, when they had showed up, they had Ammonite came up against a camp against Jabez Gilead, and all the men Jabez said they had make a covenant with us. We were serving them. Well, come on, I read this verse, but what puzzled me was why they were so quickly to surrender. They really didn't surrender then, but they surrendered mentally. Mm -hmm. You know, because they said, as soon as they saw Jabez Gilead, the man Jabez Gilead saw it, they were surrounded, surrounded by, uh, by an Ammonite, they immediately said to themselves, we're going to come out, we're going to serve you and surrender, make a cover with us. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, I understand. When I first looked at it, I said, why did they do that? Why are they so willing? Why were some of them so willing to surrender or to be able to think about giving up? Because they approached uh, they had first. They had they looked out and saw they had and surrounded them. <clears throat> and now they looked out immediately they said the response was, make a covenant with us. Mm -hmm. And we will come to serve you. Now what's puzzling me is this. So I looked at this now. When we look at our lives today, we wonder how many times why the Old Testament, we, don't know, we have an issue related to the Old Testament. But if you look at the story here, you can see <coughs> the circumstance, the situation of God is placed. Because Saul had just been made king <coughs> in chapter 10 and had issues with other people. So if God will place circumstances in your life, in your life, check this out, y'all. God will create circumstances in your life to to validate your leadership. Come on, y'all. You know, okay, what the situation may be, what's going on, God will place you in a situation, will place circumstances around you to validate your leadership. You know, so, so all that's gonna happen pretty soon. So when 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 the men in their ass, when the men of Judge David Gilead saw that, so they immediately went out and they wanted to surrender. That's right. We make it go. We make it with y'all. So they, so they initiated the conversation from the very beginning. I'm, my voice is bad, y'all. I'm sorry. <coughs> but uh, anyway, <clears throat> when they when they did that, uh, when they looked out, when this, the book said they looked out and they saw they was in camp. They were surrounded by the men of the Ammonite, by King Ahaz and the Ammonite. Now, when you look at this, this situation today, when you look at our own lives, we, we are surrounded today. We, you know, we're surrounded by all the situations in our life, yeah. the pandemic, mm -hmm. we're surrounded by people dying every day, yeah. we're surrounded by our own issue, personal issue. We're always surrounded. You know, we, we deal with a whole lot of circumstances in our life. Right. But what we need to do is, you know, here, here, you, here you see the men of Nahaz, I mean, the men of J.B.S. Gilead saying, you know, let, let us make a, a cover with you. But what I want to share with you today is, whatever your situation may be, don't, don't be willing to throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. Alright? Don't be so quick to surrender. I, I, know, I, know, I know Satan is kicking our butt right now, but the Word of God teaches we should be kicking Satan's butt. It's time for us to get angry. You know, it's because God said the Word said when He gave us power, right? Uh, power over what? Satan, power over serpents and all that stuff. To preach the name of the blood, the blood of Jesus, we have the power over Satan. Amen. 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 We're surrounded by situations every day. Right. You know, so we, we as Christians need to be, aren't you tired of Satan whooping us? Yeah. Uh, Satan been beating us for a long time. Yeah. You know, aren't you, don't give up what Satan is doing to us. We need just to draw the line with Satan. Mm -hmm. We need to understand what's going on with Satan. Mm -hmm. Let know that Satan has no power. Right. The only power Satan really has over us is influence. That's right. You know, that's all he really has because you know Satan got to get, got to get permission right. to do what he do, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, Job church that make that real clear. Mm -hmm. When Job showed up, I mean, uh, when uh, Satan showed up to need to God, mm -hmm. and God asked Job, I mean, asked Satan the question, where you been? Mm -hmm. So they threw him full of down, seeking what made a vow. Then he called out his name. Have you considered Job my servant? Come on, y'all. So, 
So that shall be tell me that it's a proof that Satan can't do nothing without the permission of God. Yeah. You gotta get permission to do what you have to do. So we have permission for the word of God, the power of the word of God, to deal with this. And we even can be tired, get angry at Satan, for he been whipping us for a long time. Don't throw the child in. Don't give up. We were so quick to surrender. And I said to him, okay, what you going through today? How you feeling today? Your problems you may have in your life today. All right. we, we're so quick to give up. Right. We're so quick to throw in the towel. Yes. So I'm going to tell you, don't throw, in, don't throw the towel in today. Don't, 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 raise, don't raise your white flag. Don't, right. don't yield to say. Don't give up to say. That's what we want you to do. What you need to do is stand, draw that line and let the say say no. That for God I live. And for God I die. And say you, you have no power over me. I got to preach the blood of the Lamb. You know, he's been whipping us for a long time. We need to be whipping him. We need to tell him say where he belongs. He doesn't belong behind us. He doesn't belong beside us. He doesn't belong in front of us. He belongs, the book tells us what, under our feet. So we as Christians fail to realize that we have power over Satan. Because so like I said, the only thing he has is influence. He may come in with somebody, he can't influence me with no liver and onion. That ain't going to work with me. And somebody walk in the door with 34, 26, 34, oh Lord, you know, he may have my attention. You know, he, he may come, she may come down and sit right there, right in the front seat. I'm going to say, oh Lord, what's going on? Because say no, because say no what you like. Say no is your weakness. Say no how to come at you. But that's all the power you have. All you can do is present the situation, but it's not the circumstances that cause the problem. And how we handle the circumstance. How we look at that situation. So we're so quick to give up. We need to trust in, continue to trust in God and trust in our Savior and trust in His Word because we have the power over Satan. Amen. So don't, don't, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't, don't rush. Don't, don't be quick to give up. Because look, look at it. I understand what they went through. They, they, even though the men in they, Jabez, Jabez Gilead, they have suffered by 7,000 in this case. I know they're tired. You know, when you flee from somebody, you know, you're going through a lot of issues, you go through a lot of stress. Yeah. And a lot of issues you're dealing with, right? Yeah. When you flee from somebody. Yeah. So when they saw when they saw that they were surrounded by Jabez, the men of Jabez Gideon were surrounded by uh King and Ahab and Amorite, they immediately thought to themselves, we need to give on up, let's have a conversation with them. But don't do that. Don't don't be so willing to give up. Don't be so willing to throw the child. Don't be so willing to yield to that situation. We need to stand out here. What you're going through, even though your daughter may be crazy, your son may be crazy, whatever, whatever the situation may be, your husband, your wife, whatever it may be, don't, don't, don't be so, so, so quick to throw in the towel. Don't be so quick to yield to say, don't quit to give up. Because we got to, you know, the word of God teaches we got to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, we need to acknowledge Him. And he said he would, he would direct our path. So my path, if I'm working with the Word of God, and I'm studying the Word of God, then I understand that I have power over Satan. That I'm not as weak as I think I am. Right. Come on, y'all. Yeah. We need to exercise that power that we have over Satan. Because look, look at us, I look at my own life situation. For so many times, where I yielded to the situation. You know, I, I, I thought with the, I couldn't do nothing about it. I thought I was over with, I thought it was quick, I thought it was just done, I thought it was just over with. But I have come to find out, you know, God always has a way out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, oh, you know, you know so but I, I went through some unnecessary changes too. Mm -hmm. We put ourselves through a lot of unnecessary pain, frustration, yeah. agony, because yeah. 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 the yeah. choices that we make, the decisions we make. But we fail to realize the word of God is working for us and through us. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Come on now. So we need not don't give up. Don't give up, I don't care what you, I don't care how bad it looks, I don't care if your mama, your daddy, or whatever, whatever's going on in your life, don't never give up. Continue mm -hmm. to trust in God. Mm -hmm. Jim Bug is out there, he's still out there, and daughter be able to go to the corner and settle her body. But mm -hmm. remember, don't give up. Amen. Just trust in God's work, and God said we continue to pray, mm -hmm. he was here and answer our prayer. That's right. And we trust in him and lean yes, on him. That God will yes. move and have our faith. Mm -hmm. He got our back, y'all. That's right. Man. He got our back. Yes. I thank God for saying flowing for me, but I thank God. Satan, I rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on, I'm, 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 what's going on with me right now? Anyway, <laughs> praise God. anyway, we look at this story. The first point I'm going to talk about, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. That's the first thing I'm going to talk about. Don't give up. Don't yield. Don't, don't, don't raise the right, the right flag. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Remember how hard it may be for you. Continue to stay on the battlefield. Yeah. Continue 
Amen. to stay on your knees, continue to trust in the Lord, continue to call upon God. Because he would hear, and he said, what the psalmist said, he'd hear and answer prayer. Yeah. You know, so we need to trust in him right. and believe in him and know that he is with us. Mm -hmm. You know, that he would never leave us, nor yeah. save us. Yeah. So we look at this situation, we can see that how we are, we can see this is in our lives today, can't we? How we surround us by right. right. We are very surrounded today. Mm -hmm. you know, all that's going on in our life today. Mm -hmm. The COVID the 19, and the, now the new Delta variant by the virus. Right. It's worse than the, the first virus. That's right. right. You know, so all this thing happened, but we we continue to fight on and do what we're supposed to do. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's it. Come on, y'all. Right. Wear your mask. Mm -hmm. Get your shots. Mm -hmm. All that we need. He, he was trusted with how to deal with these situations. Yes. But we as people fail to follow the word of God and follow God's instruction. All right. Amen. That's a lot of times we be in that situation like that. Mm -hmm. Because we're giving up. We, we feel there's no way out. Mm -hmm. Have you felt that way before? Yeah. Amen. 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 Oh, yes. It's on for me. So you feel that way many times before. Yeah. You know, I just, I mean, I'm just tired. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how they made a J.B. Escalia feel the, the mm -hmm. 7,000 escape. Because mm -hmm. they, they, they saw their brothers get killed. Right. They're not killed, but they could pluck out their eyes. So these 7,000 men escaped. That's but then right. when they saw this situation, right. Right. and when they saw that situation, they thought they, they thought they found a place of refuge. Yeah. And they went to JBS Gideon for refuge. Mm -hmm. You know, you know refuge is yeah, somebody they were looking for help, they need help, and it's, they found a place to get some, some help and to get some assistance. So that's what refuge is all about. So they, these men from Gad, from the tribe of Gad and Benjamin, they found refuge in JBS Gideon. But, 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 but the next thing they know, they looked up and they saw the Ammonite soldier mm -hmm. camped around in the city of Jacob's right. Gideon. Mm -hmm. so, so I can understand that. And they got a little nervous. Mm -hmm. You know, you get tired, don't you? Yeah. You know, you be struggling with something all the time. Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever you pray, you be praying for a long time mm -hmm. about something, you be hoping for something for a long time. And then it happened yet, but you gotta continue to trust and believe in God and His Word. That's right. Amen? Amen. So we see this in the first verse, where these men had escaped. Mm -hmm. And these men thought they found refuge. But lo and behold, trouble is only terror. Mm -hmm. well, come on, y'all. Oh, Satan will not stop. Satan will continue to be busy. Yeah. But you know, he has no, we have to remember that he has no power over no us. You belong on our feet. Right. Oh, bless his holy name. So we thank God for what he's doing today. Right. We thank God for his word today. We thank God for the power that he has given us, but we are not recognizing that power. Because he tells us in his word that he gave, gave us power. Did he say that? Give us power over serpents. Yeah. Right. Um, we can trample over this and, mm -hmm. and we feed the blood of the Lamb, right. feed the blood of Jesus. You know, said he got to go. That's what the word teaches us, don't it? Yeah. But do we actually practice it? Do we actually believe that? Do we actually trust in God and His Word? That's, that's, that's the issue. Do we really believe it? We say it, we read it, but do you really believe it? Have you really conceived it in your heart? Have you really received it, conceived it in order to achieve this goal in your life? But Satan is working, but we need to be busy too. We need to go back to our closet and get out. We'll go back to um, when Paul said in Ephesians, Throw your whole arm of God. Oh, yes. uh, it's time for us to get angry, y'all. Mm -hmm. we, we, we need to get tired of Satan whipping us, beating us, and our winning us and our sparring us. We need to get tired of that. It's time for us to get angry. Right. We need to get angry and say, let him know the Satan that we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Say we're sick and tired of what you're doing to us. Right. We're sick and tired. We're sick and tired how you destroy our family. Uh -huh. We allow us. We, it's time for us. To draw the line. We need to be like Shadrach, Beach, and Abednego. All right. Come on, y'all. You know? That's right. You know, okay, I see, okay, I see what you're doing. You're going to throw it in the fire. Whatever you say to do, they refuse to bow down. That's right. But it's here, 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 men of James Gillis, they're willing this to, to bow down. They, they, didn't even, they didn't even think about picking up their armor or going to fight. What did none of that happen with you? They thought immediately their mindset was, we have their willingness to surrender. Because they approached Nahaz, and they said, Nahaz, make a covenant with us, and then, then, we'll, oh, we'll, then we'll come out serving you. And then, then Nahaz, now what I like about Nahaz, what I don't like about Nahaz, what I do like about Nahaz, 
You can see Nahaz in the arrogance that he has. He's very arrogant in this. He's very sure of himself. Because he said, I tell you what, I, will, I, make, I make agree with you, I make cover with you under, under one agreement. If you agree with me, the, the, all the men of Jabez get it, pluck out your right eye. There's significance in that. Your right eye. Because you know, the right eye is as a soldier. They have the shield in the left hand, and the right eye they see with. And also, uh, the man of Jabez Gideon also, I mean, uh, Nahash also knew that three times a year that the Israel would go to Shiloh and meet with God. Every, t every t three times a year they would do that. And when they go up there, see what Nahash said was, that I'm going to make a reproach for you. Uh, and the second verse is that Nahash and Abinadi answered him on this condition where I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it in for a reproach upon Israel. Reproach me, he, he didn't mean he didn't want to hurt them, he didn't want to kill them, he wanted to humiliate them, he didn't want to embarrass them. Because every year they go to Shiloh, and when they go up there, the man, he must be the man from Jabez Gilead, because their right eye was plucked out. So he's, you know, so Satan tried to humiliate, humiliate us a lot of times, you know, our life, our situation. You would be in a situation with God, you would be in a situation with people around us that don't like who you are. Come on, y'all, because you stand for a Christian, you say you're a Christian, and all of this stuff going on with you, but, you know, but Satan would, would come at you. He would stand to come at you. He would preach the name of the Lord. So I'm very sorry, y'all. I don't know what's going on. It's all right. It's okay. Uh, okay. Come on. All right. <clears throat> and the man of Jacob that's getting it, once they, they went to Nahaz, and Nahaz, Nahaz told him that only one would make this cover with you and you pluck out your eye. But thank God for the elders. The third verse, the elder Jabez said unto him, Give us seven days respite, that we may send messengers unto you the all the coast of Israel, and then if there be no men to save you, we will come out to thee. Thank God for the elders. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. Thank God for our elders. Mm -hmm. I have an issue with younger people today. They have an issue with us today. You know, I thank God for the, for the young people. They brought us a man all the way, technology-wise, uh, education-wise, they come with moved along. They, they took us to a different level, but they haven't forgot where we come, where they come from. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You know, Amen. Hello, somebody. That's I'm just struggling. You all right? What's on? We hear you. I'm you. All right, uh, But as, as, uh, uh, as, uh, the men of Nahad, of Great Jabez Gilead, as they decided, and they could thank God for the elders, the elders came to them, to Nahad, to give them seven days. That's just like, you know, if you've been to the clubs, or you've been in a situation in your life, where that's just like me and the pastor. I got a gun, and I'm about to shoot the pastor, but the pastor asked me, oh yeah, let me go home and get my gun. <laughs> now, are you gonna let somebody go home? You gotta, you gonna let somebody go home and get their gun? or get them whatever they need to come back, or come on back. <laughs> and they had, this is how they had responded. They had said, well, go on, you yeah, got seven days, that ain't no problem, go on. Now, what did that tell you? Confident. <laughs> yeah. huh? What did that tell you a whole lot about they had? Mm -hmm. They had just knew that he had the victory. Yeah. Because, because in history before, when he did the Benjamin, yeah. they were putting him across over to Jordan. Mm -hmm. But we see they had here being very arrogant, and very sure of himself. Yeah. Well, yeah, go ahead on, man. Mm -hmm. Seven days, well, I'm sorry. Because, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's thinking that uh, the Israel can't get their army together because they just they newly found the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So he's thinking that they have got a new monarchy, they got a new, they got a new monarchy, mm -hmm. and they, um, they, got, they, they ain't got no army. That's what he's thinking. But he don't know that, that Israel had an army from day one. Remember when they came out, when they came, came out of Egypt? That's right. They had all kinds of army. They, so they were ready for battle. But they, they, uh, they had missed that somewhere. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what it tells me. I'm, I'm putting, that's, that's what I'm reading. I'm reading that he through his arrogance. He would let somebody go home mm -hmm. and come back. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, the elders said, seven, give us seven days, and we'll see if anybody will come help him. He sent a message to all the tribe of Israel, the other ten tribe, tribes of Israel. And when he sent the message out, uh, so they came back, when, he, when, he met, when uh, 
for the sending message out to Jay to, to, uh, to the man of Gibeah. And uh, when Saul was there, Saul was in the field working to uh, humble king. And Saul, when he was coming out the field to have the oxen, he heard, this, he heard the people wailing and weeping. And he was wondering why. He said, why, why are the people here? Why are the people, what, what's going on? What's wrong? Mm -hmm. And then the, the next verse said, that when Saul heard the tidings of the man of Jabez, the Spirit of God fell on him, and he got angry. Yeah. Oh, bless his name. We need to look, y'all. We need to understand it's time for us to get angry. It's time for us to understand that God is with us. It's time for us, as Christians, to draw a line. Yeah. Come on, y'all. It's time for us to stand up and speak, say something like John Lewis and say something. Do something. Draw the line. Quit being passive. Quit being that same work over us. We need to understand. We need to go to Ephesians, put our, our arm of God on, and get ready to fight again. Let us let let say no that we're going to stand for God. Amen. Bless his name. So it's time to get angry with Satan. It's time to be as Christians to come together. Because when Saul said, when he heard that, and the Spirit of God fell on him, Saul immediately responded in the 7th, 8th, and 9th verse. He says that, look, he took a, he took a huge, hey, y'all. Hey, good day, guy. Hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Oh, bless his name. Amen. Amen. See, I better turn my way back on, but y'all didn't. See what I'm saying? That's about what I'm talking about today. And when you got your mind made, you know what you're doing, you're going to do what you need to do. Let me trust you, God. But anyway, they had, they had, had let, let, let the message go and give the message to uh, the man that gave Gibeah. And they saw, got the message, and got angry. And what he did was, he said he took an ox and he cut it in pieces. And he and he took them, he sent each two piece of a piece of their ox to each tribe of Israel and he said this to them. If any man do not respond and come out to help to help Samuel or the Saul, then this you chop the piece of what happened to your, your oxen at home. You don't come out together and we need, need to answer the call. Because you know so many Christians are calling for help today, but we are not helping each other. You know, we have issues with each other. We're not coming together, we're not coming together, we're not on one accord as we should be. You know, we got bigger going on, we got this going on. You know, we got all this stuff going on. Satan's steady working. Because Satan shows up at church, but guess how he get here? He had to come with somebody. Somebody brought me here with him. You know, but anyway, okay. But anyway, so so when Jay, when the when the men of the, the, the twelve to ten tribes of Israel heard, got the message from Saul, the word said. That when the, when the people heard that, the plea of the need for the brothers and sisters J. Bass Gideon, it said immediately the, the Spirit of God fell on them. All right. Come on, y'all. Right. The, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God came on Saul and he took a yoke of oxen and, and hewed them in pieces and sent them throughout, throughout all the coast of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth, after Saul and after Samuel, so shall be done unto the oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. Amen. Hello, y'all. We hear stuff going on in our own family today, our own church family. We hear stuff going on. Mm -hmm. We hear people in situations and problems. Do, do, do we answer the call? If we don't answer the call, do we? No, we don't. We, we, we go through a checkoff list. You know, we make sure, we, do, you, do, you, do you got this, do you got this, can you, can you, can you do this, can you, can you sign this, can you, you go through all this stuff. The people still in need, and a lot of times people say they can't get the stuff they need. Because the church failed, the church failed to step up for the people. Yeah. You know, we as Christians, when I mean church, I mean us, us Christians, we fail to be there for each other. But here, the, 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 all the coast of Israel, they heard that the, the man of J.B.S. Gilead was in trouble. And they immediately came together, one consent. They all consented. The Spirit of God fell on them. So when God, the Spirit of God fell on them, they, got, they, got, they, they came together. And the next verse said that 300,000 300, men from Israel showed up. And 30,000 30, men from, uh, from the tribe of Judah showed up. So 330,000 people 
showed up for the battle, answered the call, they heard the call, they recognized the need. See, do you recognize the need was going on today in our life? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff yeah. we recognize, but we fail to respond to. Hello, somebody. Right. We know somebody's hungry today. We know somebody's naked today. We know somebody's homeless today. We know all of this stuff, but we fail to respond. We fail to take up the, 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 take up the battle and fight for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Pick up the call. But we as Christians, we need to be an advocate for others. That's what Christianity is all about. We speak on behalf of others. We speak on behalf of God for others. God works through us to, to help with others. So they, they agree. They, they recognize this, they, they, their brother was in trouble, so they all 330,000 men came together. And they said, and they, and they saw, sent a message back to the man of Jabez Gilead. And, man, and he told the man of Jabez Gilead that by noontime, help was on the way. You would have help by noontime. And so, so when the verse comes up, when they, when they got the message, and that same day, that morning, they was there early in the morning. And before the noon, before the noon hit, the battle was already done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He said, he's, he told me to be out there by noon, but they got there early that morning. So you see the urgency and the response to that. So how urgent are we today? Do we, do we know the needs of people we see? Are we urgent enough to respond to them? Huh? <coughs> Does the Spirit move us to move quickly? Because you know, servitude is not easy. Right. Servitude is not, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not perfect. Servitude is not uh, available, it's not easy, it's not convenient. Because you may get a call at 3 o'clock in the morning, or 4 o'clock in the morning to help somebody. Are you, are you willing to be good every morning and do that? No, I don't know now. So we have to question ourselves. Am I really ready to be, to be called, answer the call when the call comes? Man, I'm messing this up, man. Mm. Praise the Lord. No, I ain't. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, anyway, I want to encourage you today. First of all, you know, as the man of Jabez Gideon got the message, and they told Saul, and they told Nahab, Nahab, okay, tomorrow morning we come out to you surrender. But they knew the help was on the way. Come on, y'all. You know, you need to understand, y'all, that whatever you're going through, don't throw in the towel. No matter what, how, how hard it may be, don't give up. Because you need to know the help is on the way. No matter what your situation is, help is on the way. You know, thank God for help is on the way. So, you know, we need to know, no matter what your situation is, y'all, we need to know the help is on the way. Thank God for help is on the way. I put better, better sleep over there. Help is on the way. Yes, Lord. Wow. Bless you, man. Help is on the way, y'all. Now look at David. I hear about David. Uh, when he was in trouble, David said, when he looked to the north, David said, war clouds in the north. When he looked to the south, war clouds were in the south. When he looked to the east, war clouds were in the east. When he looked to the, to the west, war clouds was in the area. But David said, I'm not going to look to the north. I'm not going to look to the south. I'm not going to look to the east. I'm going to look to the hills. For what's coming, my help. My help coming from the Lord. And I thank God that He knows all about my situation. You know, all I got to do is let the Lord, let somebody else know the help is on the way. So when you know somebody is in trouble, you know somebody is down, you know somebody is upset, you know somebody is depressed, you need to let them know the help is on the way. Just hold on and don't give up. Just don't give up. Help is on the way. You need to know the help. It's on the way. Thank God that I help you. It's on the way. Don't, so, don't give up, y'all. Okay, what's, what you going through? Okay, what you feeling? Okay, what you doing? What you ain't doing? What you should do? Okay, about all that. All you need to know today, today, today is the help is on the way. And you need not, you need not worry because God said, I never leave, nor forsake you. You need to know the help is on the way. That Jesus said that Jesus came and died for our sins. He gave us power through his word. We got to help all the day. So we need to understand, y'all, that help is on the way. We thank God for the help today, y'all. Thank God for the help today. And, you know, I just thank God. I thank God for y'all today. Thank God for the situation today. Thank God for the day. I'm not feeling. I'm, amen. Amen.
Thank God. The help is on the way. That's right. Yeah, so remember, y'all, it's time to get angry. Right. As Christians, it's time to get angry. Mm -hmm. But look at your situation. Mm -hmm. Learn to draw the line. Let Satan know that you ain't giving up. Mm -hmm. Satan, be standing strong. <coughs> Satan, you have no power over us. That's right. Satan, we know the help is on the way. We thank God for Jesus. Who is our help on the way who is lost in sin? And Jesus came down and died for our sin. We thank God for his help. We thank God for what he's doing today. So you know, we thank God that Jesus died. We know he died on the cross. You know he got up early Sunday morning with all power in hand. And he gave us that same power. Because the book said when he died, we died. When he got up, we got up. Yes. So you know we've been we've been born again. Right. You know we've been we have power that we don't never don't, we don't realize it, and use that power we have today. So just want to thank God for the day. And if you don't get nothing else today, we're gonna let you know the help yeah. is on the way. That's right. Just hold on. Help is on the way. Amen. It's time. It's time to put on that war clothes, y'all. Okay. It's time. It's time. It's time to go to the closet. Dust off the hammer. Dust off the shield. Dust off the sword. And get into battle. It's time for us to be active. It's time for us to say something. Like John Lewis said, say something. Do something. You know, I don't care what is the situation, but say something. Do something. You know, I don't care what your situation may be. But remember, whatever you're going through, the help is on the way. Thank God for you. And yeah. thank God for Pastor. Thank God for his lady. Thank God for the deacon and mother. Thank God for you for being here today. And I thank God uh, for another day's journey. Amen. And I thank God that I'm learning to get angry today. You know, so we just thank God for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord.